In this lesson, we begin studying relations. And the best way to start is with the definition. We let A and B be sets, and then a relation R from A to B. This is a subset. Well, it's a subset of the Cartesian product A cross B. And we may write here, so in other words, R is a subset of A cross B. This is what a relation is. Now, many times we will see the following. We will have a relation on A. And this is a subset of A cross A. This is when, well, A and B are the very same set. So maybe let's do an example. We can take A to be 1, 2, 3, 4, B to be 0, 2, 4, and 6. Now, let me define a relation for you. We know here, by the definition, this is just a subset of the Cartesian product, and so I can specify a relation by telling you which ordered pairs are in it. I will say a comma b is in my relation provided a is greater than or equal to b. Now let's write out the ordered pairs and then I will get into some important notation. Well we can go one by one and figure out which is in it. So one, one, let's see. Let's, we would have one and zero, and that would be it, because I need the first coordinate to be bigger than or equal to ones from here. And then I have two, two is bigger than or equal to zero, two is bigger than or equal to two. With three, I have three zero, three two, and that's about it, not three four by my definition. And finally four, we have the ordered pairs four zero, four two, and four four. 0, 4, 2, and 4, 4. So this is my relation, listing the pairs. Now I want to get into some important notation, and that's as follows. So given a relation R from A to B, and here is one, for example, when an ordered pair A comma B is in the relation, we write the following. We write A, R, B. And this is read, A relates to B. A relates to B, okay? And when, this ordered pair, and this means, you know, for A and A, B and B, this is not in the relation. We write A does not relate to B. A. So this notation here, this is how I initially specified this relation. This is really thinking about it in terms of sets, and every relation is a set, Every relation is a subset of a Cartesian product. But this is um, quite commonly used. So for instance here, one relates to zero, two relates to zero, two relates to two. We can keep going, three relates to zero. But for example, three does not relate to four, three does not relate to six. In fact, we don't see six in any ordered pair. So one does not relate to six, two does not relate to six. 4 also does not relate to 6, okay? And that is, um, thinking about it with this type notation. Now, this example, we have four relations on natural numbers. And I'm defining R1, R2, R3, R4 as follows. In R1, A relates to B, provided A equals B. In R2, A relates to B, provided A plus B is less than or equal to five. In R3, A relates to B, provided A equals one, 
And in R4, A relates to B, provided A is less than or equal to B plus 3. And the question is, well, we will ask a few questions about these relations, but the first one is this. Which relation or relations, which ones of these contain all four of these pairs? Well, let's go through each one and figure out which ordered pairs are in each relation. So for R1 and for R2, for R3 and for R4. Here, we need the first and second coordinates to be the same. And so clearly, the only pairs of these four that are in R1 is 1, 1 and 2, 2. The other ones are not in R1 because they do not have here and here, they do not have the coordinates being the same, the A equals B. Now what about R2? This says A plus B is less than or equal to five. Just add, we get add, we get two, three, three, and four. So all four. So this contains all four pairs listed there. Now what about R3? R3 is the set of ordered pairs in N cross N with first coordinate equal to one. And we see just looking, that would only be one, one, and one, two. So this one contains one, one, and one, two. Finally, R4, these are ordered pairs in N cross N such that A, the first coordinate, is less than or equal to B plus three, where B is the second coordinate. So here, one is certainly less than four. One is less than five. Two is less than four. And two is less than five. So that's all four. This one contains all four ordered pairs, which contains each pair. Where well, there's two of them, R2 and R4. Maybe I'll put that over here. The answer is R2 and R4. Now, just as a comment, what do we notice here? We are taking um, A and B are both natural numbers. So we can notice here R2 is finite and R4, this one is infinite. In fact, this one's infinite and this one's infinite and so is this one but this is a finite set this relation let's think about these relations just for a moment this is how we started thinking about cartesian product at the start of the semester but we can think about them this is not all of the dots for n cross n that's an infinite set but here is some of them okay it's supposed to be lined up so here R3 has first coordinate one. That is this column. Here, this column, infinite is R3. Okay, then what else do we have? We have this one, R1. And that we can also see, we need A equals B. So this is this diagonal. And this is also a quite an important relation to think about as we move forward with our study of relations. It's the diagonal. You can think about it as the line y equals x. What else do we have? This one, as I mentioned, R2 is our only finite relation. So where would this be? Well, here is 1, 2, 3, 4, 1. Here, the sum is 5. Here's 3, 2. The sum is 5. 2, 3. The sum is 5. 1, four, the sum is five, but we have all a plus b less than or equal to five. And so that would be all of these here. So this in orange is R2. Okay, so we can see the points. Oh, this I mislabeled, my apologies. This is R1 is the relation of diagonals. We have R2, we have R3, and then we have this last one which says A is less than or equal to B plus three. Well, if you think about, this would say X is less than or equal to Y plus three, sitting in this XY um, grid. So 
So what we are looking at now in purple, this is this R4. And we can see this graphic was just a comment to really think about these relations as being subsets of n cross n. Next, I have a question, and that is, suppose A is a finite set, cardinality n. How many relations are there on A? You might think, pause the video and think for a moment what you would have. Well, the answer, we know that a relation is a subset of A cross A. A cross A has cardinality, n times n. And so the number of subsets of a cross a is 2 to the n times n. So there's 2 to the n squared relations on a finite set a with n elements. Let's see if we can see this when a is, say, 0 and 1. This is cardinality 2. We should have, if this formula makes sense, we should have 2 to the 2 squared, which is 16 relations. Oh my, <laughs> this is a lot of relations just on a two element set. Let's see if we can write all of these down. Here are the 16 relations on this two element set, but I have organized this um, in terms of cardinality. And this really goes back to our discussion of counting earlier in the semester. What did we have? Well, we had a set with two elements. This means A cross A has two times two, which is four elements, and the number of subsets of A cross A, which is by definition, that's the number of relations on A. This would be 2 to the 4, or 16. Now, we also know 4 to 0. This would be the number of 0 element subsets of A cross A. And there is just 1. It's the empty set. 4 to 1. This is the number of 1 element subsets of A cross A. And there are 4 of them. Here they are. 4 to 2, which is 6. This is the number of 2 element subsets of A cross A. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Here they are. 4 choose 3. It's the number of 3 element subsets of A cross A. This number is 4, and there are these 4. And then finally, 4 choose 4, which is just 1. That's the number of 4 element subsets of A cross A, and that's the whole thing, A cross A. But now, there's a lot of writing. You certainly don't have to write it all, but I like doing this and, and looking at it because we realize that for a finite set A, there are a lot of relations on A. This is just a two element set and these are all the relations, okay? Now, what I want to talk about next is some important properties about relations, reflexive, symmetric, and transitive. Given a relation R on a set A, R is reflexive provided for all A in A, A relates to A. This is a for all. So every single element A has to have uh, A comma A in the relation. Symmetric provided, well this would say for all A, B, and A. Now symmetric is an implication this says if A relates to B, then B relates to A. This does not say that you have every possible pair AB and BA. It says that if, and we know implications at this point in the semester, right? If you happen to have an A comma B in your relation, then you interchange. You must have B comma A also in the relation. The final one is transitive, and this, this is for all A, B, C, and A, and this also is an implication. It says if A relates to B and B relates to C, then A relates to C. So I think of transitive as you have an A relates to B, you have a B relates to C, and the middle ones match. 
and then you must have A relates to C. Now, all three of these you can rewrite in terms of the set notation. Okay, so this one, in other words, for all A and A, A comma A is in the relation. Okay, and here, this one would say, in other words, for all A, B, and A, we would have that A, B in the relation implies B, A is in the relation. And this one would say for all A, B, C in A. Well, here we have um, A, B, and B, C are in the relation. And like I was saying, the middle ones match. This would imply that A, C is in the relation. And you could put parenthesis here if you wanted to. So these are these three adjectives, reflexive, symmetric, transitive. Now, I want to go back. We had these relations, R1, R2, R3, R4, on natural numbers. I'd like to look at each adjective and decide whether or not R1, R2, R3, or R4 satisfies that property. And it will help us understand these properties a little better. A little better. First, let's discuss reflexive. This is a for all. Reflexive is not an implication, it's a for all. So for every possible, here these are relations on N, for every possible natural number, we need uh, that ordered pair, A comma A, to be in the relation. So we will say yes, which relations are reflexive and which relations are not, but we will also discuss why. Well, the easiest one to see yes is R1. In fact, um, R1 is precisely the element such that you have this, right? Because we have, if A equals B, we have 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, 5, 5. That's exactly these ordered pairs. If you remember from our picture we had here, R1 was the diagonals. And we can reinterpret this to say that a relation is reflexive provided it contains all of these diagonal elements that we looked at. And so certainly R1 is, this was precisely the diagonal elements. Um, the other one that is, is R4. Why would this hold? A is certainly less than or equal to A plus three. That's how we get yes. And then R1, as we mentioned, these are precisely the diagonal elements. Now, no is the other two. R2 is no, R3 is no. And how do you justify no? Well, this is a for all. And so to justify no, you just need one pair that is not in the relation. So I need one, A comma A, where A is a natural number that's not in the relation. And it's not that hard to come up with examples here. For R2, I'll just say notice, um, 10, 10 is not in R2, or I could write it 10 does not relate to 10 for R2 because 10 plus 10 is bigger than 5. And similarly, let's say 2, 2 is not in R3 because here, 2 is not equal to 1. Uh, in fact, this R3, if you remember it from our graph, it was this column sitting on top of x equals 1. So the only sort of diagonal entry that's in this relation was 1 comma 1. Next, let's discuss symmetric, and we will answer the same question, which of these four relations are symmetric and which are not? Okay, this one is an implication. It says if you have an ordered pair, A comma B, then you have B comma A. Okay, well, let's see. R2 is easy to say yes about because if A plus B, maybe I will write this, if A plus B is less than or equal to five, then B plus A is certainly less than or equal to five. You can add a plus B equals B plus A. So this would be the justification for R2. 
and similarly R1. The only ordered pairs in R1 are uh, A comma A. So you would have 2, 2, 2, 2, 3, 3, 3, 3, 10, 10, 10, 10. Okay, definitely R1 is symmetric. And um, I don't think that R3 and R4 are. So no, but we need to justify. Okay, so for R3, well, notice that one relates to two, but two does not relate to one because the first coordinate is not one. Now let's think about our four. Well, let's pick something big for B. Let's say two certainly relates to 100 because two is less than or equal to 103, but 100 does not relate to two because 100 is not um, less than or equal to five, okay? So this and this, they verify that R3 and R4 are not symmetric. Now for transitive, and I think perhaps students struggle with the, the idea about transitive the most out of reflexive, symmetric, and transitive, but here's what it says. We need A, B, C, and natural numbers here, since these are relations on N, and then if A relates to B and B relates to C, then we must have A relates to C. And like I was saying, we have this, the middle ones match, that's what I always tell myself. Okay, well, which relations do we say yes to? Which relations do we say no to? I will say no to R2 and R4, and maybe we will we'll do this first. So what I need to do is generate something where I have these A relate to B, B relate to C, but this fails, and I just need one example, and then we conclude it is not transitive. So let's start perhaps with R2. R2, what do we notice? That four relates to one, and one relates to four, because four plus one is five, which is less than or equal to five. One plus four is five, which is less than or equal to five. But you see, middle ones match. Four does not relate to four because, well, four plus four is eight, which is bigger than five. So this is definitely a no. Now, what about our four? Let's discuss that one over here. The idea is we do not want to be marching up. We do not want to have A is less than or equal to B is less than or equal to C because then it would hold this if then. So we want to be marching down to find a counterexample. So let's try 10. This certainly relates to seven because 10 is less than or equal to seven plus three, which is 10. So this definitely holds, and then and, okay, we'll do the same idea. Seven, step down by three. This relates to four because seven is less than or equal to four plus three, which is also seven. But you see, middle ones match. 10 does not relate to four because 10 is not less than or equal to seven. Okay, so here is a counterexample for our four, this marching down idea I was talking about. Okay, so we know R2 is not transitive, R4 is not transitive. The yeses would then be R1 and R3. Now, if you think about R1, R1 is only the diagonal entries, one, one, two, two, three, three, four, four, like this. So if you happen to have both of these, if you have a middle ones match, that would be some natural number B here. And because of R1 being just these diagonals, that would be that this is also B and this is also B. And so then of course, this is just BB. Okay, hope you see this. R1 is definitely 
transitive. Now this one's kind of similar. If you have, you see R3 is, what's this column here? It's just everything with first coordinate one. So if you have two pairs like this, this means um, B is one. Maybe I will write some justification for R3. So in R3, if you have A, R3, B, and uh, B, R3, C, well, just by writing this, it must be that B is one. And also we know that A is one because of what the relation is. And so certainly we would have, certainly we would have this because A is one. Okay, so that's kind of the idea behind why R3 is transitive. This is what we saw. We went one by one, but we saw the reflexive of these four, R1 and R4 are reflexive, of these four, R1 and R2 are symmetric, and then of these four, R1 and R3 are transitive. Now, if you notice, this is just a comment which we will come back to in the next lesson, but notice R1, this, which was just the diagonals right here. But this one is all three. This is reflexive. This one is symmetric. And this one is also transitive. And these are very, very special types of relations. This is the focus of the very next lesson. It's called an equivalence relation. But like I said, we will get to that next time. But of these four, R1 is the only one satisfying all three of these adjectives.